Uh, morning, folks. Jeff from RV Diagnostics. We got a background problem here. Hold on for a second. All right, we still got a little bit of light pollution in the back, but I'm we're getting ready to do a maintenance on a 5.5 Onan generator RVQG with Quiet Generator. It's a new series, okay? So turn around and go over some stuff with you. One of the cover just pops off. And it's got them little right there. It's got some rubber clips on here. Okay, and I'll show you the QG quiet generator. It's a different series. Alright, got fuses hidden in different places. Alright, so let's go over some common stuff. One, this is the B positive, by battery positive, 12 volt DC. You make sure you grab it, make sure it's tight, not moving. Okay. These right here are kind of in there tight. I have to reroute them, but they go down to the fuel pump, which is under here. We'll get into that. This is your start and stop switch and prime. These are your 30 amp AC breakers. Okay. So now some more stuff. This is the fuel line hose that comes from the fuel pump underneath. We'll get a picture of that eventually. All right, now this is your air filter box. If you notice right here on a lot of the ones, it says air filter, part number, oil filter, and two quarts with an oil filter, okay? And your oil filter is that white thing right down there. All right, now let's look at it. This is your fuel cutoff solenoid. This little screw here, folks, I've done in other videos, that is your drain, okay? Let me see if I can, right there. That's where your old fuel, nasty fuel is going to come out, okay? This is your altitude adjustment, all right? If you see it in there, zero and 5,000 feet, all right? Because the air thins out the higher we go up the Appalachian Trails and Rocky Mountains. This is an electric joke, so when it's cold, it applies voltage, the spring heats up, and it pulls this okay now that's a vacuum break up air all right of course that's the carburetor bowl all right this is the fuel hose going in that's your inlet on the older ones it used to have an inline fuel filter hold on let me do this get a little bit of light right in there that used to have an inline fuel filter in it but the only fuel filter they have now is up under here all right, I like a double filter, uh, but this one, you can do it. If you put one in line, make sure you put a metal one, and you want to get one that catches 5 to 10 micron. It really does good. All right, so now this little lever here, that's your governor, mm, and it works off of air, okay? Right there, see it moving the throttle plate back here? So when the engine, the engine is at a certain RPM. They're set. And then when it comes under load, this thing pulls back a little bit, all right? That's your fixed. There's how you adjust the tension on it. Don't be playing with that unless you've done some work. But, you know, I just want to show it to you. Okay. Now let's take off the air filter cover box. Okay. Now, a lot of you don't understand right here, but look at this service information. Check daily, air filter, change 150 hours, oil and oil filter. There you go. All right, so is there any adjustments? Refer to opera. A lot of them have adjustments on the valves. Okay, and a lot of you don't know that. That's later. All right, I'm just going over some stuff for you. Here's your air filter. Looking pretty good. We're actually going to do a, a service on this generator. Now, you see that little plate right there? That's your carburetor going in. All right, now watch. That's your choke. She's cold, and then the element right here, the heating element, the bimetallic spring inside heats up doo -doo 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 -doo, and opens up. Now, if you look down in there, you see the other plate I was talking about. Let's see, right? We'll blow it up. All right. So here we go. Choke heats up. Right, and cranking it. And then we got the other one over there. And hold on. You see it moving in there? The back one, all the way in the back. There you go. That's actually the throttle plate. Okay, this one here I'm moving now. A is the choke. All right, so let's go back to 1.0. Here we go. All right. 
Now, due to emission systems, which is the new one, that's your PCV valve up there. All right. So we had battery coming in. We had electric choke. We had altitude adjustment, lean and rich. This leans it out. This is your fuel cutoff. This is how you drain it. I'd be draining it every week if I was you. This is your electric choke, okay? That's your choke inside. That is your throttle down here, right here. Remember, I showed you the blade. That's your gut. That's your load sensor right there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It does some neat stuff, All right? So we'll go. We'll get into it. All right, now what's next? All right, so I'm gonna put put you on pause, and I'm gonna get ready to go for a prime and a start. Because I want to up totally when I drain the oil. So you know, there's that backlight. I might have to get rid of that. It's just blinding me out. But uh, anyway, put you on hold. I'll be right back on a little bit of maintenance on a 5.5 QG generator. Before I do that, I want to go over something. All right, right there. 5.5 HGJJ Hig Jab. Spec K is what you need to go by, all right? And there you go. All right. So turn it back around. Put you on pause. I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Okay, I'm going to do a prime. Maybe you can hear it. There's the fuel pump down there. I'm going to see if you can hear it. Ready? Now I'll let it prime till it loads up, which means it's going to change. All right, so let's see if it starts. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to watch this choke. It's going to heat this element up. It already heated up a little bit, and it's going to pull it off and open it up. That's what you're looking for. If they run ridge or misfire or something of that nature. Here we go. I'll always prime, even though it just started. I start. Okay, I induced a fault in this. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, so what I did, I hit this lever, made it, it couldn't regulate the speed. All right, so now I'm going to show you something. You hit prime real quick, off, let go, and it's supposed to flash codes. I might have did it wrong. Hold on. Yeah. Huh. I messed up somewhere. All right, we'll start it up again. Notice that plate opened up more. 
if you go look at the, the video prior to this, like a couple minutes before. Electric chokes working, started up good, our prime's working. Uh, all right, well, the one reason I got this, I'm gonna warm it up. All right, I'm actually gonna do a fuel filter and I'm gonna do an oil filter. So I'm doing a basic service. The air filter looks really good, put you on pause. All right, remember I said I induced a fault by messing with the load governor. So what we do, we touch this and flashes three, three, that's your primary code, service needed. So then I hit it again, one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, code 14, ready? One, rest, one, two, three, four. Let it go three times. One, one, two, three, four. In case there's a second code. So that's how you pull codes. All right, so I'll get right back with you. I'm gonna cancel the system and then I'll show you how to clear it. All right, back from the pause. So what you got here is I induced the fault by taking the governor. Now, what does the governor? It keeps the RPM steady. What is RPM? Revolutions per minute. Also, it's the frequency, hertz, 60 times a second. It changes positive to negative. That's how important the RPM is, especially when it's under load. The load, your ACs, your microwave, your AC loads drop the RPM, so it brings it back up. So code one four was the inability or the governor could not maintain the frequency. So there you go. I self-induced it. I found out what? That this little computer in here can see problems. All right, now how do you clear code? What you're supposed to do is hold that down for 30 seconds. One, two, three, four. Now believe it or not, Let's say the switch got stuck or that signal or whatever. It's got a code in there for uh, more than three minutes prime or something like that. It's crazy with the, the each model is a little different. All right, so we're going to try to clear the codes. And then we're supposed to let it run for 15, 20, 30 minutes so it sees the code has been cleared. All right, but I'm just going to go through the procedure. All right. I don't want to run it that long without the cover on. Remember, folks, this is a air-cooled generator. Okay. All right, we'll go for a little start here. Okay, as you've seen, that light stayed on clear. If the code was still on, that light would be flashing to 3333, fast flash. Since it stayed on steady, then the code is cleared, and it saw that the governor could do its job. Well, I'm the one that created the problem. Why? Because I want to see if my computer catches those problems, okay? Because uh, there's also fault codes or no fault codes troubleshooting. All right. So hopefully you learned a little bit about this. I'm going to go into the preventive maintenance part of it. I already went over some uh, choke, how you get the fuel out of the bowl with the little screw. I went over the fuel shut off, shut off solenoid. Went over the notorious uh, you know, where the positive volts come in, right? So let's say you got a little bit of a problem. You go from here to ground with your multimeter and you crank it. You don't want to see below 10 volts here. All right. But let's say you go back to the batteries and they're up like 11.5, but you got 10 on that bolt I just showed you where it says positive on a generator. You have a problem on your positive feed side from your batteries to your generator. That's how important some of this testing is. All right. So I'm letting it all hang out there today. You have a good time with this video. I'm going to close this one up. What's the motto of RV Diagnostics? Well, Team RV Donos, because I'm sorry. What's the motto? Test, not guess. We're going to get you used to doing that, folks. Two, safe travels and may your campfires burn bright. 
until the next video or when I see you on the road. And don't forget, this is uh, October of 2021, almost November. I know late March, early April that we'll be heading down to KOA campgrounds at uh, Myrtle Beach. So if anybody's down that way at that time, come on by, stop by. No, I'm not fixing your RV. I might walk over to your RV, walk you through some stuff or whatever, but I'm not physically laying hands on it. Uh, I need a break. But we also can stand around a campfire or sit down around a campfire and BS a little bit. All right, folks, thank you very much. This is Jeff. Remember, test not guess. Safe travels and may your campfires burn bright until the next video or when we run into each other on the road. On the road. Thank you very much.